I'm Andre Huey for SK Newsline on the third and final night of the St. Kitts Music Festival, the 23rd annual St. Kitts Music Festival. And it turns out to be the most successful night of all. It was a jam-packed crowd here at the Kim Collins Stadium in Bird Rock as thousands and thousands of people came out to see the acts for the third night, and especially Buju Bantam, the highly anticipated act. It is estimated that about 15,000 persons came out to the show tonight, and um, it was indeed, they got their money's worth, or even more than their money's worth, as performances from LMA, Omari Banks, Smokey Robinson, and of course, Buju Bantam himself. Well, we're going to present you the highlights, and we had a chance to sit down with uh, Omari Banks from Anguilla and speak with him a bit about his performance. So here are some of the highlights of uh, Saturday night's show, of the various acts that performed, and a little snippet of the interview we had with Omari Banks. So I think, I mean, when I started to write songs, I'm always looking for ways of how I can inspire people and how ways of how I can show them to kind of change their paradigm to a positive one or get their paradigm into a positive one. And I think Half Full or Half Empty is really about that. It's about how you see things in life, how two people can have the same um, experience and then um, but have a totally different end result because how they see things. So that's what Half Full, Half Empty is about. I think I made a rose, I said. Who feels enough? Ooh, ten kicks, what did I say? Cut the knees, we run. Never see that drama, I get down, I think I made a rose. So there you had the highlights of uh, some of the performances on the third and final night of the St. Kitts Music Festival, including a snippet of an interview with Omari Banks. Reporting for SKN Newsline at the 23rd Annual St. Kitts Music Festival, the final night in Bird Rock at the Kim Collins Stadium. I'm Andre Huey. Police have arrested and charged Ira Maynard of Pitcairn Street in Newtown for the offense of murder on July 5th. He was charged in relation to a wounding incident that occurred on July 2nd and resulted in the death of 58-year-old Davis Manners. Police received a report of the incident at approximately 8 p.m. on Tuesday. They responded and found the body of 58-year-old Davis Manners lying motionless in his home with multiple stab wounds about his body. The district medical examiner was summoned to the scene and pronounced Manners dead. 
Personnel from the forensic unit processed the scene and took items of evidential value into custody. I am Namayam Bumganalo for SKN Newsline. Police are investigating a fatal traffic accident that occurred along the F.T. Williams Highway on July 5th. The accident occurred at approximately 9.15 p.m. and involved motor car P7226 driven by Diamond Williams of Greenlands and pedestrian Hemet Safi of Shadwell. Circumstances are that motor car P7226 was traveling east along the F.T. Williams Highway and when it got in the vicinity of Jam's welding shop, the pedestrian was crossing the road and was struck. Emergency medical services and a medical examiner were summoned to the scene. The medical examiner pronounced Safi dead. The driver of P7226 was taken into police custody to assist further with the investigations. I am Namayam Bumganalo for SKN Newsline. St. Kitts Nevis music fans are up in arms with the recent comments of soca artist Famanapi about his performance at the recently concluded St. Kitts Music Festival. While performing at an event in St. John's USVI recently, Farmer Nappy was asked by a patron why he performed better at that event compared to the music festival. The artist's response earned the ire of petitions on social media. Here is a video of the exchange. You was in St. Kitts? How I perform in St. Kitts? I perform here better. You know why? You know why I perform here better? Girl, look the opportunity to tell she now. I want you to go and tell the minister culture in St. Kitts. Why aren't you saying what's in St. Kitts? Right. But only people from St. Kitts. I want all you to tell all your government. When from an appear and them come, give me live band. We like we live band. Make some noise suspect the live band. The comments on social media berated the soca artist. One user said, Too many good artists out there to accept his disrespect. He should have said this before the check. Another said, Some artists are not performers. They're only great in studio. Another said, You get pay, so you should have bring your band out of your own pocket. But noted Kittishan sound engineer Azam Bailey is standing in Farmer Nappy's corner. Speaking on the radio show, Let's Talk St. Kitts and Nevis, recently on SKN Newsline's sister radio station, Voice of the Caribbean Radio, Mr. Bailey said Farmer Nappy made a valid point in his comments. What he's really saying is, I prefer to perform with a live band, and if I do perform with a live band, my ability to produce something of quality is, is, is raised drastically, right? So when he say, you all go and tell the people in St. Kitts or whatever, he's telling them, for me to perform better for you, so that you could have a better show, so that I am put in a position to succeed, you go and tell the organizers that we need live band. Now what could be wrong with that? Like, that is something that even the artists here in St. Kitts have been bawling about for years. Mr. Bailey said the organizers of the St. Kitts Music Festival appeared to be interested in packing the soca night with a lot of artists and this is affecting the quality of the production. I think they genuinely decided we want to give the patrons more for their money and what that meant to them was more artists, right? However, now you have certain constraints now. All those artists can't come, yes. Um, some of the artists might prefer to have a band or whatever and because that gives them the opportunity to put their best foot forward and deliver the best product but that is just impossible mm -hmm. to have 11 bands coming on and off the stage right the show can finish so just before the show supposed to start on friday mm -hmm. right so what has happened in the past and what i suggest for the thursday night is instead of having so much 
ask. What we want to do is go for quality. Interestingly, at no point in our interview with Farmer Nappy backstage at the music festival did he hint to a concern about performing on tracks. Well, my performance was very nice tonight, you know, the crowd, you know, it have a lot of ladies. So my music is for ladies, you know, I mean, and um, relationship a lot, you know, my deep into relationship in my lyrics. You know, um, the crowd is very warm. It's have a huge crowd and I will like to say Kids is a warm and wonderful place. The Music Festival Committee has not officially responded to the claims, but announced this week that it will be hosting a press conference next week, Wednesday, where the question about Farmer Nappy's comments is bound to come up. I am Namayam Ganalo for SKN Newsline. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're fully covered after an accident. The security of your home and everything in it that means so much to you. And knowing that even when the weather does its worst, you and your family are covered. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. SKN Patriots fans, get ready for the 2019 CPL season with the Patriots Power Play. It's a new live weekly web series providing you with all you need to know for the SKN Patriots 2019 season. Watch Patriots Power Play, interact with us on the Patriots Facebook page during live stream and send us topic suggestions for the next show. It's Patriots Power Play every Wednesday at 10 a.m. live on the Patriots Facebook and Instagram pages. Patriots Power Play, powered by SKN Newsline. In today's world, so many ordinary businesses pass themselves off as something special. But what's really special is what you're looking for. Don't settle for anything less. Inspiring women to be their own kind of beautiful. Offering a comfortable place to shop for quality products and excellent service. We have everything you need. Looking for fashion? We have top quality jewelry. For makeup? We have them. Black Opal, Revlon, Perfume and much more. Lucky Cosmetics Hair and Beauty Supply Store. We carry an extensive collection of hair and beauty products to look your best. We are located at the Circus Taxi Stand, Bastyr St. Kitts. Call us at 869-466-7541. Meridian Medical Pharmacy is the best place to get your pharmaceutical products. We make filling prescriptions easy. Our well-stocked pharmacies are ready to serve you. Check us for medical supplies, skin products, supplements, and so much more. Ask about flu vaccines. At Meridian Medical Pharmacy, we are focused on offering a professional, personalized pharmacy experience. Our service is personal, compassionate, and friendly. Located at our state-of-the-art medical facilities at the corner of South Independent Square Street and Adlam Street, downtown Bastyr St. Kitts. And now we have a new branch on Frigate Bay Road in the Sugars Complex. Call 465-5096 and 465-3306 or email pharmacy at meridianmedcons.com. Visit Meridian Medical Pharmacy today and experience professional customer care and fast prescription fill-in service. Meridian, Meridian Medical, Medical Pharmacy. Pharmacy. President of the Republic of China on Taiwan, Her Excellency Dr. Tsai Ing-wen arrived for her first state visit to St. Kitts and Nevis on Saturday night aboard China Airlines at the RLB International Airport. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis, led by Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris, rolled out the red carpet to welcome President Tsai on her first state visit to St. Kitts and Nevis. She was warmly greeted at the airport with a military salute from an honor guard comprised of soldiers from the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force, the Coast Guard Unit, and officers from the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. Prime Minister Harris introduced Her Excellency Dr. Tsai Ing-wen to the members of the Federal Cabinet, 
Dr. Harris was also introduced to President Tsai's ministerial and parliamentary delegation. On Sunday, President Tsai held bilateral talks with Prime Minister Harris, followed by a dinner at the Park Hyatt Resort, hosted by the Prime Minister. Both governments signed an agreement on cooperation in technical and vocational education and training in a brief ceremony on Sunday, July 14th at the Park Hyatt St. Kitts. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Education Sean Richards signed the agreement along with Taiwan's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. the Honorable Zhao Shuang Wu. This agreement is to assist St. Kitts and Nevis with cultivating vocational education of teachers, establishing a comprehensive vocational education system, and providing high school graduates with professional skills. The signing, which was witnessed by President Tsai, Prime Minister Dr. Harris, and other dignitaries, formed part of the President's official state visit to St. Kitts and Nevis and other diplomatic allies in the Caribbean. Meanwhile, the highlight thus far of the President's visit is the conferring of one of the highest national honors of St. Kitts and Nevis. President Tsai, on Monday, July 15th, received the Order of St. Christopher and Nevis, the highest honor St. Kitts and Nevis bestows on a non-national. The President's state visit ends on Tuesday, July 16th, where she will depart to visit other islands in the Eastern Caribbean. I am Namayam Bumganala for SKN Newsline. A national of St. Kitts and Nevis was removed from a cliff over the Pacific in Hualien County following a 17-hour standoff on Wednesday, July 10th. Taiwan News said the incident began when passerby told the emergency services that a foreign woman was wandering around aimlessly by the side of the Song Haolian Highway near the scenic Cheng Shuang Cliff, the Central News Agency reported. The sighting happened as early as 6 a.m. A rescue worker from the Huangling County town of Xingxuang headed immediately to the site. However, as they arrived, the woman walked away from them, and since they were worried that she would take more extreme action, they kept their distance. The Coast Guard even sent a ship to the area, which pointed a light to the scene as darkness fell, CNA reported. A teacher, roommates, and relatives were called to the scene to try and persuade the young woman to return to the road. By 11 p.m., she finally agreed to have the rescue workers pull her up, ending the 17-hour standoff, according to CNA. A statement from the Embassy of St. Christopher and Nevis in Taiwan said they are aware of the unfortunate circumstances surrounding the illness of a student from the Federation pursuing studies in the Republic of China on Taiwan. The embassy has been actively engaged throughout the difficulties experienced by the student and has been offering technical, financial, and emotional support to date. The embassy in Taiwan has involved the Ministry of Foreign Affairs both in the Federation and in the Republic of China on Taiwan. The statement continued that at this point, the embassy wishes to place on record its sincere gratitude to the government and the people of the Republic of China on Taiwan. In particular, the many ordinary citizens of Taiwan who volunteered their services and the several agencies which participated to ensure a positive outcome under difficult and dangerous circumstances. The embassy also requested privacy and compassion for the student, her family, and loved ones in this clearly difficult time for them. The embassy said it will continue to provide every support for the student and her family. I am Namayambom Ganalo for SKN Newsline. In response to concerns raised by members of the public about illegal dumping of waste in the countryside of St. Kitts, the Solid Waste Management Corporation, SWMC, partnered with the Scenic Railway Tour and toured the tourist trail recently. Members of the SWMC were able to see firsthand the trail and where the Scenic Railway took initiatives to have sections of the island 
that were polluted along the tour trail cleaned. They also viewed certain sections of communities that contained derelict vehicles. Among the SWMC contingent for that trip was human resource manager Jamiela Christopher. It's stemming from our, day, our weekly radio show, Talking Trash. Many persons showed concern in regards to the dumping of waste, illegal dumping. And so Solid Waste took that time to really do some investigation and we partnered with the Scenic Railway who allowed us the accommodation to so go around in the country in the back end to really investigate. I'm very happy and proud to say that the waste that we observed was at a minimal. There were specific areas that we felt that were affected. However, Scenic Railway Scenic have made an effort to do some cleaning. We have all the intentions, if we have all the intention of monitoring that area and of keeping the area that we have observed um, the dumping in that time. She also disclosed the plans to address the problem of removing derelict vehicles along the trail. Meanwhile, Ms. Ainita Lake, collections manager, who was also present for the tour, said she did not see as much derelict vehicles as she had expected. She said they are on the move in issuing tickets and going into areas to get derelicts removed. We are on the move, um, also issuing tickets, so we are going into those areas to get those derelict um, taken up. I want to believe that um, Scenic Grail would have done some of that as well, they would have taken up some, but um, there are others that we are um, definitely going to move ahead to get rid of. Also accompanying the SWMC team was an intern in the marketing department of the corporation who gave her take on the tour. My name is Michaela Parkinson. When I went on the tour, and we were on the railway, it was actually cleaner than what I expected, and it looked really good. The SWMC thanked members of the Scenic Railway for their partnership on this initiative in keeping the tourism trail and, by extension, the environment clean. Minister with Responsibility for Infrastructure has confirmed that the builder of the new cruise pier at Port Zante Bastia has made a claim for increased costs, which has been denied by the St. Christopher Air and Seaports Authority, Casper. Speaking in the 30th July sitting of the National Assembly, Minister Ian Patches Leibert confirmed weeks of rumors that the engineers had encountered an undersea physical impediment to the cruise pier construction that will take several millions of dollars to resolve. Minister Patrick Leiber said Casper turned down the contractor's request. Important to inform the nation that the contractor is claiming, Mr. Speaker, a further $7.8 million through unforeseeable physical conditions, and this has been fully denied by the client's Casper. The matter is referred to arbitration, Mr. Speaker on the Clause 20.6 of the general conditions of the contract. Scasper and the Canadian Commercial Corporation signed the contract on the 22nd November 2019 for the construction of the second cruise pier at Port Sante. Leibert said Scasper rejected paying the increased costs because such was the responsibility of the contractor to carry. And interestingly, Mr. Speaker, it reads as well. Contract and construction performance risks is borne by CCC. Therefore, any potential costs or time overruns are managed between CCC and JV driver at no risk to Scasper. Mr. Speaker, that speaks for itself. Minister of Infrastructure speaking in the National Assembly of St. Kitts and Nevis. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. The recent High Court decision regarding the regenerative stem cell operations which were being carried out at the JN France General Hospital is a watershed moment, said Dr. Terence Drew, chairman of the Sinkis News Labour Party. Information reaching SKN Newsline is that Justice Eddie Ventos has ordered the release of cabinet documents on the matter in the case of current Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris against former Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas. Prime Minister Harris is accusing Dr. Douglas of libel during a speech Dr. Douglas delivered on 22nd of June 2016. However, the defense for Dr. Douglas asked the court to allow their access to pertinent cabinet documents relating to the startup of the Sinkis Institute of Regenerative Medicine, 
and the subsequent import and use of umbilical cord blood products. The High Court Judge, Justice Ventros, ruled that the Cabinet documents relating to the Institute must be released by 2nd August 2019. The Distinguished News Party Chairman said at least the Court will know what occurred and would strengthen what the Labour Party had been saying all along. According to Dr. Drew, the procedures to authorize the activities of the Institute for Regenerative Medicine never should have happened. And I keep saying that the government has to answer. And, and this is such a serious violation that led to the forced resignation of the then CMO, Dr. Patrick Martin, who refused to accept that this blood can be infused in people here without having passed through his office with the proper testing mm -hmm. um, and, and other measures taking place to protect the health of the population. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very pleased with this ruling and I will continue to follow up on it because healthcare in our country must be at a level so that our people can be protected. Chairman of the Sinkis News Labour Party, Dr. Terence Drew. I'm Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. <laughs>
It was a valiant fight from Jason Rogers, but unfortunately he did not manage to medal. I'm Andre Huey coming to you from Lima, Peru for the Pan Am Games 2019, where Jason Rogers for St. Kitts Nevis ran in the 100 meter finals. He finished at seventh place with a time of 10.40 seconds. He led the race up to 60, but just fell away just before the race ended. Uh, the race eventually was won by Michael Rogers of the United States with a time of 10.09, followed by Andre Camillo de Oliveira with a time of 10.16. And uh, third place going to a Caribbean athlete, Antigua Barbuda CJ Green, with a time of 10.23. We spoke to Jason Rogers after the, the race. Obviously, he was disappointed, but he was pleased with the effort he gave. I'm actually feeling good. You know, I came out, I gave it my best shot. Well, not my best shot, but I tried my best to execute and put the race together, but it just didn't happen. I mean, I came up against a very good feel, despite the circumstance, and... I tried and I'm just thankful that I finished injury free, thankful for all the support and I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be here and represent the Federation. In the past my first race would actually be like very slow but my body has responded um, very good for the first race out here um, because of the level of competition so I mean going forward is a good look despite the seventh place finish. It's a good look for the future, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, what's next? I'm not sure. I've got to talk to coach, see if we're going to keep running or shut down the season and focus on next season. So left to see what he has in store. So there you have it there, Jason Rogers of St. Kitts Nevis, uh, finishing seventh place with a time of 10.40 in the men's 100 meter finals. St. Kitts and Nevis has one more chance for a medal. It will be Jermaine Francis. He'll be competing in the high jump semifinals on Friday, August 9th. And uh, from all accounts from his coach, he is looking good going into that event. We'll see what will come of that. Of course, this is his first Pan American Games. And I just need to note this, of course, that the Pan American 100 meter records in the men's 100 meters uh, is owned by our very own Kim Collins. He ran that time of 10 seconds flat in Guadalajara, Mexico, back in 2011. Coming to you from Lima, Peru, for the Pan American Games, I'm Andre Huey. Nevis' Premier Mark Brantley said he is not aware of any rift within the Team Unity Coalition, St. Kitts and Nevis government as had been recently claimed by opposition Sinkis and Nevis Labour Party. Premier Brantley responding to a SKN News 9 question at his 25th July press conference in Charlestown said he is aware that some people would like to have a weaker coalition. Is there a rift in Team Unity? I do not know. That's all I can tell you because I'm not aware that there's any rift. I believe that there are many who would like to see a rift. And there are many who would like a rift to develop. But I cannot say that I'm aware that there's any rift. Yes, the Prime Minister came to Nevis. Yes, I was unaware of the visit. And yes, he and I have spoken on the matter. That, to my mind, is what mature people do. It's what leaders do. They have a discussion and they resolve whatever misunderstanding there might have been. And so I don't see that there's any rift. According to Brantley, his focus does not involve getting involved in the noise but to deliver for the people of Nevis in his capacity as Premier and for the Federation as Minister with responsibility for foreign affairs. I have a mandate to manage the affairs of the island of Nevis together with a very skillful and capable team that the people of Nevis in 2017, not so long ago, elected overwhelmingly. And I believe that that is our task, not to get involved in the noise, because there's a lot of noise being made. It seems to me nowadays that a man gets up and he says, Mark Brantley is a thief, stole some money. And then the media called me and asked me, are you a thief? Because somebody say you're a thief. I'm not getting involved in that. My job is to manage the affairs of Nevis. My job is to play my role in relation to federal matters and those ministries that have been entrusted to me. And I make bold to say today, as I've said elsewhere, that pretty soon, it not will only be me, it will be others as well. Three of us are going to make ourselves available in the next dispensation to serve the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. As for his relations with the Prime Minister, Brantley dismissed the Labour Party's allegations. The Prime Minister and I, again, 
I believe that the Prime Minister and I have a good relationship. Certainly on my part, I would even go so far as to say the relationship is an excellent relationship. Whether or not others would want to say something different, that's a matter for them. But from my perspective, I see no rift. I see sometimes in any relationship there are misunderstandings, there are even disagreements. But mature leaders discuss these matters. Not in the public square, not by getting on radio stations and seeking to see who could have the best punchline. But you sit down together. You discuss these matters. Premier Mark Brantley speaking at his July press conference in Charlestown, Nevis. Glenn Bart for SKN Newsline. Down but not out. That's the spirit of uh, St. Kitts Nevis high jumper Jermaine Francis. I'm Andre Huey coming to you from the Athletic Stadium in Lima, Peru for the 2019 Panam Games. And uh, Jermaine Francis of St. Kitts Nevis competed in the high jump on Friday afternoon. Unfortunately, he didn't finish on the medal podium. He finished in the 13th place, but he's still in high spirits. We spoke to Jermaine after his event. I went into the event with a strong mind. I thought I could have pull some some magic out of the hat but things didn't turn out how they wanted to turn but I can't say it's it's the weather or it's the place it's just me it's it's just the way of life to me I just gotta go home and just start from the square roots and just get back into shape because I'm not in shape right now so I just gotta come back hard and do my best next day well my first panama experience is well this is a great experience to me i just i love the people the people are so nice to me and the code is just giving a, a loving a loving feel to everybody but my, i would like to come to the second panama games it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough i gotta go back home in my little country and do my best in training and just be strong and just don't give up well i trying to i was trying to go to worlds try to qualify for worlds so i got my eyes on the 2020 olympics so I got I to gotta set my mind to train harder and do my best in everything. The high jump was won by Luis Fernandez from Cuba. It was very impressive. He uh, got um, over the bar in most of his first attempts uh, throughout the competition. So he won the gold medal for Cuba. Silver went to Robert Mason of Canada. Also a very excellent athlete. Did very well, um, but was just edged out there by Cuba. And the bronze medal went to Roberto Luis Sanchez. Ruiz Sanchez of uh, Mexico. So again, Jermaine Francis of St. Kitts Nevis competed in the high jump. However, finished in 13th position, did not medal, but he's still in good spirits and he's looking forward to the other major events, most likely the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. And that's it for St. Kitts Nevis here at the Pan American Games. The four athletes have already competed and uh, they gave their best. In a subsequent report, you'll hear from uh, coach Lonzo Wilkinson on his assessment of the athletes' performance in the Pan American Games 2019 for St. Kitts Nevis. Reporting from Lima, Peru at the Athletic Stadium for SK Newsline and the St. Kitts Nevis Olympic Committee, I'm Andre Huey.